All right, everyone, welcome back to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I'm your host, Kieran Anderson, and today we have Captain Xavier Baldequin on with us. How's it going? Good, good, man. Just coming back from St. Augustine. I just fished a uh, King Mackerel tournament this past weekend. Sick, dude. How'd you do? Um, well, based on that whole tropical depression that we had rolling through literally first week of hurricane season, uh, fishing was pretty slow for a lot of the people out there. Um, we did end up still catching a few King mackerel, um, nothing huge. Um, our biggest one was about 21.2 pounds, um, still added points. Um, we're in a pro series event that we fish. It's called meat mayhem. Um, and they fish, it's a five leg series. That was a uh, leg three. That was up in St. Augustine. And uh, it's a two-day event. We fished Friday and Saturday. So Friday was pretty nice. The storm wasn't too bad up there. It was coming through um, South Florida at that point. Um, and Saturday, I mean, it was pretty nasty, six to eight-foot seas out there. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty tough fishing. I mean, fortunate for us, we're uh, sponsored. Our team is sponsored by Streamline Boats. So they had us on a 35-foot um, Streamline powered by... Uh, three, 400 horsepower Mercury motors. So, I mean, we were doing pretty good out there. Yeah. It sounds you can handle epic. the seas on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was pretty, it was, it was awesome. <laughs> so give us, give us a little overview on yourself where, so you're from Florida, obviously you're on the water a lot fishing yeah. and stuff, but, uh, did you grow up there? What's, uh, what's your backstory? How'd you get into fishing? Yeah. Born and raised in South Florida. I was born in Miami and, uh, grew up in Fort Lauderdale. I came up here when I was about four years old. Um, Grew up pretty much freshwater fishing, did the bass fishing, getting peacock bass, largemouth, all that stuff when I was younger. I mean, really, every morning you could find me with a fishing rod when I wasn't going to school, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, once I got a little bit older, you know what I mean? I could, had a little bit of money to start buying boats. I started off with a little 15-footer, um, sold that one, got into a 20-footer, and kept on growing in boats. And eventually, once I had my 22-foot Mako, Um, I was on the water so often that I was just like, man, let me see if I can get my captain's license and um, see where that goes. Um, Ended up starting my charter uh, three years ago. And I mean, it's kind of been like a domino effect, really. I mean, from one, it turned into over 100 a year. You know what I mean? So it's just kept on rolling. Um, Now I'm in a 25 foot contender powered by 300 Suzuki. and um, obviously on the tournaments, I'm fishing on those streamlined boats. So it's it's continuously grown. I mean, it's been a, a passion of mine since I was young, growing up here in South Florida. Um, when I was in my teens, my stepdad had a smaller 21-foot boat, and we used to use that down in the Keys all the time, do bottom fishing and stuff like that, get grouper, snapper. Wasn't really big into the pelagics until I started getting a little bit older and started fishing with a couple of my buddies, my brother-in-law and started getting the mahi mahi and the king mackerel and i mean it just it's it's been like everybody else that fishes i mean once you find a fish it it becomes like an kind of like an obsession yeah you got to get that the right outfit the right gear you know what i mean you want to get that that first one and and when it comes to king mackerel i mean you can catch a 10 pounder or you can catch a 70 pounder i mean the, I think I believe the world record right now IGFA is uh, ninety three pounds. Jeez. I mean, so and these things have huge teeth. They run like at fifty miles per hour, and it's just I mean, it's a fish that you can definitely get addicted to catching really quick. <laughs> so you you've been doing your charter business for about three years, you said. Yeah, three years. I, I pretty much started um, towards the beginning, of, like first year of COVID and stuff like that. Um, Work was a little bit slow at, at the machine shop where I was working and kind of did, um, I mean, I was just transitioning into a, a, the right size boat at the right time kind of thing and got all my credentials at, at that time and started rolling. Yeah. So. And what, what made you want to start chartering? Um, just my passion for being on the water so much. I was always the one that wanted to be on the helm and driving boats and, and constantly, I mean, really, I. I don't know a lot of people that like going out into the ocean that when it's like three to five foot or more, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it really doesn't bother me and a couple of my buddies. And I, I just love being out there. I've been out there when it's been torrential downpours. I mean, some people tell you you're crazy when you're going out there like that. But at the same time, those are the seas that make you a better captain. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So you Calm seas never made a great captain. <laughs> <laughs> you were bringing up King Mackerel a lot. Uh, let's talk about that. Uh, what... 
what is so much different about king mackerel compared to, um, you know, different types of fish? And, and the mackerel family is a part of the tuna family, right? King mackerel is part of the mackerel family. We have Spanish mackerel, we have Ciro mackerel, and then we have king mackerel. Um, so they're kind of different than tuna. I mean, um, they're longer, kind of like a barracuda, silver looking fish, very long teeth. Um, like I said, they can grow up into the nineties. Um, tuna tend to be a little bit rounder, a little bit, um, fatter. Um, then you have the blue fin, the yellow fin, the black fins, um, dog tooth. I mean, there's a bunch of tuna out there. Um, down here in South Florida, we generally catch black fin tuna and we get yellow fins here and there. Um, every once in a while you get a lost blue fin that kind of cuts in a little bit too close to the coast, but generally we're sticking to the black fin tunas when we get them in this area. And uh, do you fish for King Mac a lot, or is that like the normal thing around there? Um, uh, yeah, I I definitely do. I'm, I've been involved with a tournament series, like I said earlier, yeah. um, which is the the prize fish for that um, series is King Mackerel. Okay. Um, but during my charters, we do also target um, King Mackerel. Different different types of fishing. Um, we basically have three four different styles of fishing that you can do in order to catch king mackerel obviously um depending on the size that you're you're going for I don't, you can catch you can use just fluorocarbon with a circle hook if you're trying to get a 10 12 pounder smaller something just for like a eater fish you know or you're using a wire leader and um different treble hooks and stuff like that and different rigs in order to get those big trophy fish for a tournament winner are they pretty good fights are they fun to catch Oh man, those things, even, even the smaller ones, when they hit the line, it's like they hit it with, with all the, the willpower they have, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, generally when the way that they do attack is they'll on a bigger bait, they'll kind of swing in and strike and, and try to cut the propulsion off the fish. Yeah. They'll cut that tail off and then swing back and, and eat whatever's remaining. Um, when, and when they do feed like that, that's why we use stinger rigs. We'll, we'll have a J hook in the front of whatever the bait that we're using and then trail that with a treble hook towards the tail. With, with those King mackerel, they have pretty gnarly teeth. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. It's, um, those are one of those fish that you really don't want their face anywhere near your body when they come <laughs> into the boat. That's funny. They have, it's, it's like razor sharp teeth, dude. It literally, if they just kind of like brush against you with those teeth, man, you will be bleeding. And it's kind of, they're really dangerous. I, I always make sure I tell my clients, you know, before I bring them in the boat, you know, keep, keep your feet away from them if they don't have shoes on or whatever the case is. I mean, you don't want to get bit by one of those. You'll, you'll definitely need stitches pretty fast. What, when's the best time of the year to, to fish for King mackerel? Um, they are a migrating fish, so technically you can get them year okay. round if you're in the right place at the right time. Um, so they migrate north in the spring and they come back in the fall and they come south. So, um, based on that migration, um, that, uh, pro series event that, that I'm fishing, it starts off beginning of the year. We're fishing Key West, um, from there, we kind of go to the central part of Florida, work our way up to St. Augustine, that last event that I just did. We'll go all the way up to the Carolinas in September and then come all the way back to the Gulf of Mexico and, and fish Biloxi, Mississippi, where they're also in, in there towards uh, November, where the waters are extra cold. Yeah. Is there... <laughs> and extremely rough. <laughs> yeah. Is there, a, is there regulations on mackerel? Um, as far as bag limit, you're allowed to keep two per okay. day per angler. Um, I believe you're allowed to keep 10 per boat, um, per day. And the minimum size is 24 inches, if I'm not mistaken. Um, usually you tend to get you, those smaller ones. We call them snakes. You kind of just, unless, unless you got clients that really want to eat them, you yeah. know what I mean? Which they're generally a better tasting fish if you want to cook them. Um, just seasoned, uh, blackened or whatever the case may be, a smaller King mackerel is going to be a better tasting fish. Once they get a little bit bigger, they start getting gamier. Um, those are usually called what they say they are more of like a smoker fish. And, um, that's generally used for a fish dip. So with, obviously it sounds like there's a lot of King mackerel around there. Um, 
Yeah. Give me the rundown, <laughs> dude. I want to hear the rundown on how are you catching these? Are you sightseeing them? Are you uh, finding them on the plot, on the fish finder? What are you doing? Um, you can do both, actually. Um, they'll definitely be chasing baits on the surface okay. of the water, and you'll see them sky. Yeah. Uh, you, you can see a king mackerel jump and come out of the water five, six feet, and they'll just cut across. And it's it looks like a little missile coming across the water, just chasing the baits on the surface. Um, but we also get them on wrecks. Um, you want to find kind of like a relief on the bottom, somewhere around 15, 20 feet, anywhere that you have that kind of hard bottom, um, where you're going to find your snapper, they're eating them. You know what I mean? They're, they're generally kind of like a shark. They're that big predator fish that's down there. You know, they're very stealth, very fast. They're going to hit that bait. They're going to cut it right in half with their sharp <laughs> teeth. Um, that's sick. so you want to you want to kind of fish around wrecks, you know what I mean? That's a lot of the times we'll stick to one wreck. We'll kind of swing around it, work the outside. Um, you don't want to be right on top of the wreck. You'll be getting too much bycatch. You'll get amber jacks. You'll get Goliath grouper that hit. You'll get um, red snapper up there in St. Augustine. We, there was some massive red snapper. It was it was a shame that they were out of season. We couldn't keep them. Um, so if you stay right on top of the wrecks, you're going to have a lot of bycatch. So you generally want to kind of work your way around it and and find those reliefs that I was saying. Are they usually alone or are they in schools or how do they work? Generally, you'll find a school. So if you find one, there probably will be another one. Um, but you, you kind of want to find the right size because if you're catching the smaller 15, you know, smaller ones, 20 pounders, I mean, sometimes there'll be one big one around there, but... I mean, if you're in an area that you're catching now 30 pounders, 35 pounders consistently, now you're in a better area, you know, but they will school up. Um, you will find those loner fish also. Uh, the bigger ones will probably be the ones that are kind of swimming alone. You'll find those sometimes offshore. You just, you're fishing for mahi and all of a sudden you get a, you get slammed by a big kingfish and you're just like, what is he even doing out here? Um, but sometimes you can find them in 200, 250 plus, uh, feet of water, um, It'll be kind of like a random bite when it's out there. You're not really targeting them. Uh, generally, you're going to be, uh, this time of the year, they're kind of spawning, so you'll find them along the beach in that greener, darker water. Um, so they, like I said, they're a migrating fish, so they will move around, but they they move to where the temperature's right. They'll be in that 75-degree water, 74-degree, and... And you'll find them around all those structures and stuff. Uh, what are you using for bait? Are you using live bait? Are you using artificials? I really don't use too much artificials. It's mostly live bait when you're going for king mackerel. Uh -huh. um, we'll use some frozen baits like uh, ribbon fish. I don't know if you've ever seen what a ribbon fish looks like. Kind of like an eel. It's really very, very silver looking fish. They have really sharp teeth. Kind of like a weird looking beak in the front. Okay. Um, crazy looking fish the first time I saw them. Um, and you're going to be using a different rig for that one, but you'll troll downriggers. So downriggers you'll have, um, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So downrigger basically helps you put that bait right where you want it in that right water column. So you can place the weight, drop it down to 75 feet. If you're working 90 feet of water and have that bait just above 15 feet above that, um, structure that you want to work. And that's usually where we'll put a ribbon fish. Um, or we'll use a goggle eye. That's a very good live bait that we'll use. That's usually the ones that I told you will have a J hook in the front in their nose and we'll put a stinger down towards the back or on the belly. Um, that's one of our live baits. And then every area that we fish, depending on where we're at, has a different bait fish in the area. Here in Fort Lauderdale, we use pilchards. They're kind of like a sardine. Okay. So those, sometimes I'll use them just on a circle hook. Um, when I'm up in North Carolina, we'll use pogies um, or mullet if they're around. Just kind of like matching the hatch of, of yeah. what's the general bait that's in that area. But you do use, a, we, we do definitely troll a lot of live bait. We also use um, bluefish, which you'd be surprised, man. I get some clients that are like, you're going to use a bluefish that's like, I can't even fit my hands in the screen, but let's say almost 24 inches long and that's a bait fish <laughs> it's like a fish that's bigger than any of the bass that, that some of my clients have ever caught wow you know? um but king mackerel will destroy them they absolutely love them um blue fish we'll use blue runner 
Sometimes we call them hardtails. Um, a lot of live bait, I mean, that, that is used depending on the area that you're fishing. Sometimes people use greenbacks, um, red herring um, in the keys. So there's definitely a different uh, live bait depending on the area that you're fishing, but we do use a lot of live bait and um, frozen bait. Really, not. I, I don't use lures. You can probably catch them when they're on the surface and they're kind of working those baits right on the surface. You could probably throw a spoon yeah. out there and just work it really quick with a spinner and, and get a bite. But I know people have caught them with um, vertical jigging at, at times. So, I mean, that they're predator fish so they will hit your line sometimes you get that random bite and you're just like holy crap what was that because <laughs> it's zipping off line at 50 miles yeah. an hour and then all of a sudden it's king mackerel are they uh are they dependent on like tide swings or type of currents or anything like that yeah depending on you're always going to have your minor and your majors during the day um as to where that bite's going to be a little bit hotter um definitely I've, we've had times where we're fishing an area and we are marking just tremendous amount of fish like this past weekend we were definitely marking the fish but based on the conditions the water was a little bit fresh based on all the rain it was a little bit blue bluer than you'd like it wasn't as green as you'd like so those fish are definitely going to be more capable of seeing the baits and and seeing that rig that you're presenting to them so sometimes they just they have lockjaw down there and they're not biting you know when they when you catch those fish are they are they diving straight down or are they like on the surface still how do they usually react to to being caught i mean i've never even seen big mackerel or king king mackerel generally speaking when they hit that line man they're going to be peeling off straight yeah. out it's just like at 50 miles an hour like i was saying it's just going to burn that line it's just going to be scream and drag um and they're they don't run straight down um the bigger ones i've heard sometimes they'll fight like a shark and that's i'm talking like a 60 70 pounder because they're using that weight against you so gnarly. but they're always going to give you that huge dramatic run you know what i mean and it's 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 crazy it's like one of those things that just gets your adrenaline pumping because it's just screaming do you have any rigs and sometimes they'll turn around and just beeline right right back to the boat oh yeah you got any rigs that you can show us um yeah i do actually i have a couple rigs right here that i can show you so i'll start off with this one right here so this so that's a what is it have wire is that wire yeah, so this is a wire. It is number five camo wire, and sometimes they use up to number seven on the back. You'll have a 4X strong treble on the back okay. with a number four or number five J hook towards the front. Got it. And about three feet of wire leader in the front with an 80 pound spro swivel Dang. in the front. And this. This will generally be used, I mean, different size. For a goggle eye, this is about six inches. That's the one that we're using, that I'm showing you right here. Sometimes you'll have it to eight to 10 inches if you're using a bigger bluefish or a blue runner. Those will be like a larger rig. The front on these right here, sorry. Um, the front hook on this one's a 5 -0. Okay. And this is gonna be either a VMC or a Mustad hook. Got it. And on the back here, you got a 4X strong 4-0 um, treble hook. And these rigs that I got, the other one that I got here is a, this is a ribbon fish rig. Okay. So this one, this one's got a half ounce jig head in the front. Oh, okay, yeah, I see that. That'll be in the nose of the fish. Got it. Weighs it down a little bit. This is gonna be on a, on a dead bait. Okay. And then, same treble hooks, you're gonna have one, two, oh, three of them working all the way down the back of that fish yeah like i said that's a it kind of rep it looks like a snake or like an eel they're a very silver fish very kind of they'll just move about it's very it looks pretty good in the in the in the water a very good presentation and this time of the year when when king mackerel are spawning along the beach um they'll actually kill ribbon fish because ribbon fish are are one of those fish that are eating their eggs so they'll kind of just do that. They'll just strike them in order to kill. You know what I mean? They, they won't strike them to eat them. They'll just kind of like kill strike. <laughs> That's so gnarly. So it's a very good bait to use this time of the year along the beaches. <laughs> yeah. Um, Are they good eating? I mean, I mean, think about it, though. It's like a protective mother. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, king mackerel are definitely good eating. Um, 
like I was saying earlier, the smaller ones are going to be your smokers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, your smaller ones are going to be your eaters. Uh, you can blacken them or cook them any any type of way, like uh, lemon pepper or put a couple onions on top with some potatoes and kind of saute them that way. Um, the bigger ones are going to be the smokers, and, and generally you're going to find those in your fish dip. So if you go to Flanagan's or something like that, one of those restaurants, you'll usually find king mackerel as your fish dip Um when you go out to eat that and, and it's very good. I mean, if you throw it on, like I have a Traeger here at home, throw it on there for a couple hours that way, brine it first, obviously, and then throw it on the Traeger for like six hours, get it nice and brown, break it on down and then, and throw it together a couple spices on that recipe with some mayo. Yeah. And, oh my God. It's amazing. What, what are, <laughs> do you have any tips or tricks for somebody like me? If I wanted to go catch some King mackerel right now, obviously on your side of the world, but Florida side, um, off my, off a boat or yeah. something. What, um, what do you got for me? hundred percent. Um, depending on what kind of, uh, rigs you're using, um, it's going to be different, um, fishing. Uh, you can troll planers, um, with ribbon strip, I mean with a uh, bonita strips, um, and present a little, uh, a flash in the front with a little skirt. You could pull those at about eight miles an hour in, in shallower water, like 70 to 50 feet. Um, use those. We'll pull two planers off the back going about six to seven miles per hour. Sometimes you'll go eight miles per hour and, and you'll get those smaller 15 to 20 pound King mackerel. Sometimes you'll get a surprise 30, 40 pounder Harley. that'll hit that way. Um, if they're eating on the surface, you can throw out a pilchard with a circle hook or even a J hook, kind of leave that bail wide open, let that fish swim out. And as soon as that line starts ripping out, you just close that bail and you're on for a good fight. Usually when I'm doing it that way, I'll use a circle hook okay. because those king mackerels, like I said, they have those really sharp teeth. And if you're using a J hook, they'll, they'll bite through that leader if you're too far down their, down their mouth. So you want to kind of have that corner of the mouth hook set with a circle hook and you can get them on the surface with, um, sometimes I even get them with 30 pound fluorocarbon. And they don't bite through that? Or if you're going for those they, yeah, I mean, you're going to get a lot more um, hooks that get yeah, taken away yeah. <laughs> if you're using smaller leader, you know what I mean? But you'll get a lot more hooks. You, you'll definitely get a lot more hookups. Um, once you start finding out that they're coming up with no hook, then you, you know it's game yeah. mackerel down there. Then you can up your leader a little bit, maybe go 40, go 50, and then you'll start getting those hookups. You want to find that right leader size. But sometimes you want to go light leader with the right circle hook size, 3, 4, 4 oh. And you can get that perfect hook set. It just depends on who's really on the rod. Some some of my clients, they'll be a little bit too quick on the hook set. They're used to J hook. They're not used to using that circle hook and reeling tight on them. So you'll miss that. Um, you'll miss that opportunity because you'll pull that bait right out of their mouth on a circle hook. Well, if you want to go and, and catch one of those bigger trophy fish, like I was saying, with the live baits, live goggle eye and stuff like that, um, when we're tournament fishing, we're going two miles per hour trolling them, two baits on the surface, one a little bit further back, one a little bit closer to the boat, and two downriggers. One 10, 15 feet off the surface and one mid-range. That way you could present different baits in different areas and kind of use your, your plot finder. You'll see a fish at 50 foot range. You can let the guy know in the back, your mate, and, and let him know, hey, raise that raise that downrigger up to 50 feet and let's see if we can get that fish that I just marked. I think that for somebody like me, I'd probably just want to come with you and you can show me how it's done. <laughs> might be easier. Yeah. might be easier for me that way. It's, it's, it's definitely, um, it takes yeah. time just like any other fishery, man. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Um, mistakes made, you know what I mean? Uh, missed fish. Those fish are, they're, they're one of those fish that, man, they'll put on a huge fight, huge show, and you think you got them in. They'll come right up next to the boat, and all of a sudden they peel off all that line that you just that gained. That sucks. <laughs> so, I mean, it's one, yeah, it's one of those fish, dude, that if you don't do everything right, it's hard to get those 40, 50 pounders in the boat, man. If, uh, if I did want to book something, how can I do that? Do you have a website that we can book charters through? Yeah, 100%. You can... Uh, Find me on realitcharters.com or you can find me uh, on Instagram at realitcharters, also on Facebook, realitcharters. And I have my own personal page also on Instagram under Captain C A P T underscore X. Sweet, dude. 
I love it. I, I want to get one. I want I actually do. It's funny because I always thought like, yeah. I always thought mac like the mackerel family was part of the tuna family. I don't know why, but um, I just always thought that like there's. I I could stand corrected. I could stand corrected. We're both probably. <laughs> it could I, be. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I know, right? Like we're in the mix right now. Uh, but I know mackerel. There's three different species of them, and I I, I want to say that they're not the same as tuna, but they're such a wrong. unique looking. Um, Oh yeah, thing's crazy looking. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Oh, I mean, you can catch the Spanish mackerels off the beach, yeah. yeah. And then those bigger kings, hundred twenty feet, you know. Well, dude, you're frothing me up to go fishing. I think I'm gonna grab my rod and reel and go try to get some halibut around here or do something fun. But uh, I appreciate you, oh heck yeah, you uh, coming online, and I'm sure everybody listening in right now is super stoked to, to listen about this. And uh, yeah, man, thanks, Xavier. Yeah, man, I appreciate you guys having me on. Whenever you're here down in Fort Lauderdale, man, look me up. Let's go. Absolutely, we're on. Let's go catch a king. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for listening in to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast, and uh, we'll catch you next time.